Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's nice seeing you today, and I am back playing a little more Retail Royale. I have to say, in the last couple of hours I've been playing it, I have about quadrupled the time since the last video I put out yesterday, and um, yeah, this game is really fucking good. To start off, I have to say that ranged weapons are not your friend. I had a favor for the pencil cannon the other day, and no, no. That thing is unreliable and useless as the name implies. Other than that, I mean the revolver is absolutely dirt garbage. I have not been able to hit shit with it, as you will see in the footage. I have not tried out the archery or the darts yet. That is going to be a future endeavor. But, uh, yeah, range has not been my friend. It might be that I'm just bad at the game. The use of melee weapons, I've u I've noticed it's... You want to block more than you attack. Like, if you attack, block, attack, block, and then throw in a push every once in a while to spice things up, like, you're doing better than the majority of people. Other than that, like, the best friend that I can foresee you using, and I tend to use it a lot, is just yeeting things at people. Throwing things has just been the most effective choice for me so far. The Oedipus of what I think should go on with the weapon system, like if you wanted a few changes for me, as I feel like the stamina bar goes out really quickly compared to like, I don't know, other games, and that just might be the fact that it is the initial release of the game and that's just a very hard thing to get down on the first try. But things like the butcher knife, like, I don't know, I feel like I could swing it more than three than or four times before my stamina goes out. But then again, I've never tried to use a knife like that before. The use of fire extinguishers and dynamite are probably the most overpowered items in the game so far. I don't know how many times I've died to dynamite, and the use of a fire extinguisher as a form of, like, visual hazard is actually really really smart. One thing I didn't point out in my last video that I kind of wish I had and so I want to bring it up now is that the use of traps is really refreshing. In fact, the use of switches in order to create temporary dead zones is just really smart. And bear traps and all kinds of other things, it just it helps the game immediately. That is fundamentally something I think more games should implement. I think that I've seen traps in a few different games, like Rust, I know Apex Legends has them and stuff like that, but just generally, you Usually you only see like C4 or claymores and things, and I think that these nice distractionary items or things that can hit you from a distance, that's just a really good touch for a game like this. I think that the player base could definitely be better, and to that end it is very dependent on more people playing. It is a newer game, and it, since it is looking like an indie title for a first-person shooter, I don't think that it's going to see that level of AAA player base. But then again, I mean, we've been proven wrong with games like Happy Wheels and things like that a lot before, and I could really see Retail Royale being one of those games that just gets a really strong cult following. It's difficult, the kills are rewarding, and just overall I couldn't recommend it more for a person that's looking for solid PvP conflict. That being said, when it comes to solid PvP conflict, it is very evident from the gameplay. I'm not very good at this game, but you know what? One of the strongest features I've noticed from this game is despite the fact that I'm not having a good time with winning, I'm having a good time just running around, attacking things, getting into the heat of the moment. Like, I am sweating when I play the game, and that is something that does not happen unless I am in the game. I am trying my hardest, and that is really something that I don't get a lot of the time from some of these AAA titles. Like, sometimes I just kind of move through the experience. And yeah, sometimes, like, for example, uh, Tears of the Kingdom, I'm playing that now, and that is a really good fashion, like, casual experience that I can really get behind, and I just, I feel like it's really strong suited for the player base that it has. Versus Retail Royale, I am 
constantly in the heat of the moment. I am worried things are behind you. The uh, use of sounds that aren't from players, but just from like the intercom and to trip you up, that's a wonderful feature. I think more horror titles in particular should utilize it. But like the ambience in itself, it's like you don't feel like you should be there because it's like you're in a store after hours. So like, I don't know. It just, it has an entire aesthetic to it that I couldn't, necessarily master in my first video when I was talking about it, and I just, I really think it's important to go over it. Now, obviously, this game is graphically underwhelming compared to some other shooters like Apex Legends and Fortnite just look phenomenal in comparison. But that being said, I am a staunch believer that not every game has to have, like, the most overwhelming graphics imaginable. I mean, at some point, you have to consider the middle and lower class of PC gaming. And that's not to say, like, you know, oh, they're worse at it. It's just, like, not everyone can afford to put thousands of dollars into a machine just to play games on. And even if they do... Like, my computer, for instance, it runs hot on certain titles, and I have active means of resisting that, but, like, at the end of the day, like, I can't stop it from running hotter than it is. It is a laptop for gaming. And a lot of people can say, oh, well, you know, hey, Skull, go get yourself a gaming PC, a proper one. Go get that big clunky tower. Well, guess what? I have one, buddy. The power supply doesn't really work that well, and it sucks. I want a new one. I want to fix it, but I also don't have the money for that. But that's not the point of it. The point is, is that these graphics on these newer games, it makes it a lot easier to play on. It makes it more intense in a way to know that, yeah, I am in a game, and they are focusing more on the combat, on the weapons, on the atmosphere and ambience than they are on how good it looks because overall I feel like Dark's dev understands what a lot of gaming companies don't and that is that game is are they are an art form but more than anything games are a fundamental means of showcasing fun and entertainment and if you take the fun and entertainment out of a video game by making it too complex too difficult too graphically over overhauled that my computer can't handle it, then you're missing out on vital qualities of gaming, and you're also taking away from the player base that you are trying to delve into. And I mean, this is a lot for just a retail royale thing, but you know, commentary, what can I say? Really just... I think the scope of the gameplay that we're looking at here is just so fundamentally better than other titles that we see. Like, for instance, I would play more Retail Royale than I would a game like Call of Duty. I would play more of a game like this than I would even something I'd even say is like Skyrim or Fallout. And the reason isn't because I don't enjoy them. Fallout's one of my favorite game series of all time, and Skyrim is one of the first major open worlds that I got to explore in modern graphics. The thing is, is, is that these games just don't have the replayability and the intensive focus that a game like this has because it's not big it's only four gigabytes it's not trying to be a triple a title and in it it is mastering exactly what it is trying to do and that is commendable that is more than respectable and i hope that they can further the concept make it better turn it into something that it really could just shine in. Like, for instance, I think the addition of more accuracy in the weapon systems. I think that skill points that could translate in, so, like, you level up and you get more points that would, uh, you know, faster climbing, higher jump speeds, perhaps, more damage resistance, things like that. I think if you were to add all those in, you could make a real solid game. And, like, right now, I'm in the Discord server, and as of the time of making this, I, I do have have to say development is going really well for the game and i really hope the developer is able to get his motherboard fixed because oh boy dropping a drink on it really sucks otherwise 
this game is working really well for I don't know how many people in particular are behind it. I don't know how long it took for the development of the game, but I will say that in the time that I've played it, which only a couple hours, it is really well running. The glitches that I have found are kind of annoying. For instance, I would like it if I could throw a table and it could go through doors when it is clearly angled to do so. But I also understand that there's limitations in the physics engine of being able to pick virtually anything up and throwing it at people. Another thing that I think really could be worked on is that there really, really isn't a lot of um, indication as to what sector you are in the map. So like for instance, if I'm in the warehouse area and that area is closing, I do see that I'm in a warehouse, but I'm not exactly sure where I am entering the next area until I'm in the main hub, like main furniture area with all the pencils and everything. And that is understandable at the beginning of the game but it does kind of irk me when i'm trying to traverse around like i i in one game i think i've only ever been able to get to three or four different areas very close to each other and i feel like in a longer duration game with a full 16 players i should be able to get more than that a couple corrections i do need to make since my last video is that there are no full squad based game modes. It is strictly duos and single player. Uh, there is a champion mode, which is as well as like a ranked mode, and I haven't done much of those personally, but if you want the best chances of playing, you'll have to play on EU servers. And, you know, if you're really just looking to join the community and learn more about it, they have a Discord. It is super friendly. Uh, it's full of a bunch of people who are just having fun. I'm in there. So, uh, yeah, come by, uh, try out the game. It's on Steam again, and uh, you can go try it for yourself and hopefully have fun. This has been another Freeform video. I hope to uh, have it out today, and uh, yeah, you guys have a great one, and thanks for listening. If you like what I, my content and what I do here, uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, as well as share it around with your friends and families. Peace.